So we're going to be working on Brent's truck again here today. He came back out this weekend here. So we got some stuff here. We got a fuel tank, skid plate, hitch. Then he brought a whole bunch of parts. So we've got some steering stabilizer stuff here. Got some shocks over here. New battery cables, new idler pulleys, brand new starter. Got some brake stuff here, new copper, nickel copper stuff and a master cylinder. we got a hydro boost coming for this truck and then all these power steering hoses here. We're gonna try and get as much of this stuff put on today. And then also we have the stuff that he brought over last time. We've got some fuel tank straps and some wiring and some fuel lines. We're gonna try and get as much of this on today. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that and get everything lined up. And we'll try to go ahead and show you the process of doing all of that. And we're also going to be putting on a steering system on here as well, which will be in its own individual video. So we'll have that outlined because that's a little bit more involved than anything else we're doing. Okay, so Brent had brought me a bunch of stuff for his truck, and I wanted to touch on this. So these are the two positive cables. So this is a new one and an old one. The closest one to us here, that's the old one. That is what you receive when you buy a new cable. So you have your starter lead here. You have your solenoid feed there. And then you have your one battery cable that goes to the other battery. So he's got a little extra wires there that we're not going to be using. Okay, so here's the new one. And you use you get the same wires, but you see this one looks a little different now. So you have to take your original cables, take your looms off. There's no rubber bumper here, and there's a metal bracket that goes around here that holds that to the block to hold it up. And then you can see the starter solenoid signal wire. That doesn't come with a new battery cable. So you have to disassemble your old style, your old cables, to put all this stuff on your new cables. So that includes this loom, this loom, that loom there, this loom here, and this rubber corner piece. You could just let these flop if you want, you know, and not put it on, but you still have to add this signal wire in that goes to the solenoid. As you can see, this is new. This is old out of the old one. So as you can see, there's only one here. So this, what I like to do is we like to heat up a knife and you cut all the way around. That way you can slide it back onto your new cable. And then you zip tie it, electrical tape it, however you want to hold it back together. And then you'll put your metal bracket back on here. Metal bracket is currently being painted, so we don't have it here to show you. But clamp it back on here. If you want to, you can put a zip tie around it just to make yourself feel better. And that holds it right to the block so this doesn't flop around when you're driving. So we can show that to you once we put it on the truck here. So if you're buying new battery cables, keep in mind that just because you got new battery cables doesn't mean you got everything to do it with. So you make sure that you have your old set handy so that you can swap the stuff over to your new ones. You're going to need the old stuff for your new cables. Don't know why they did it that way, but that's how they did it. So that was something I wanted to bring out to show you. All right, guys. So I didn't video a whole lot of this because we had company here this weekend. Uh, along with Brent, a friend of mine was putting an engine in his vehicle. Um, so we weren't able to do a whole lot of videoing showing all of this. But as you can see, the table has... Uh, gotten a lot lighter here so we went ahead and we have the new ground cables put on those attach right here there's your driver there's your passenger uh, i had mentioned the battery cables that bracket it bolts right here so that's why there's an extra nut on this stud your chassis frame ground is here got that put on got some new idlers put on he was able to actually still get these from ford so those are nice. That's a, that's a nice little option to have. He found these really nice Fox shocks. 
and I can give you a part number for those if you want, but these are for a four inch lift, which is what this truck has here. You've got the e-brakes put into, e-brake cables put into the hubs. And we still have to secure them because we've got to get this bracket to hold it back here. Haven't bolted the shocks up until we get these e-brake cables ran. Got this fuel tank put in. And here's this bracket that I was talking about. We're going to paint it here today. So that's why it's sitting here. Got the hitch loosely put on. And nice coated tank that he had sprayed. And all factory OE bolts that we used to hold that in there. Now over here you can see that we've got all the fuel lines put in. And we have the wiring put in also. So these rear fuel lines, uh, I had to make these for him. His were damaged in the fire. So I had a set of long bed fuel lines that I had to cut and then also flare and reinstall the original lines so that it would go to the fuel selector. Let's see if I can get in here and show that to you. So you can see I use the factory style stainless steel compression clamps. Those are very good clamps. They seem to hold up really, really well. Whereas not like a worm clamp that'll strip out. So that way we can still use the factory selector, which is on order at the moment. Went ahead and we found some clips on some harnesses that were broken. Went ahead and used a factory style fabric tape to reinstall those. Same up here with these clips here to hold them all in. You know, the fabric tape holds a lot better than just your regular generic electrical tape. Put all these clips back in the factory locations. We still got to put the safety clips on these fuel lines here. So we got a lot done this weekend on this truck. We got the steering all set up up here. That's the Michael Lucio kit that's been covered in another video. Got a blue top steering box also. And then we still got to put some copper, nickel copper brake lines on here, but we do, we are running a PMF steel braided uh, soft lines for this front and rear. So we have these all pre-installed. As you can see, there's no brake lines yet. Also put an ATS lower dipstick on this. The transmission dipstick was rubbing the up pipes. This is a previous problem that he probably wasn't even aware he had, but this bracket had gotten bent at some point and was rubbing the up pipe. So what happens is these vibrations that run through this dipstick here, they will transmit down into this lower dipstick. This lower dipstick is a press fit from Ford. Even if you buy a new one, it is a press fit, it requires a special tool to be installed. And the has a special type of glue that once it's pushed in, it kind of like builds up almost like Teflon and holds that seal. Well, this ATS dipstick tube here has three O-rings. So if your old one's bad, you can literally just rip it out of there. It, there's nothing holding it and it leaks. And as you can see, there's some residue still here from it leaking previously. And you pull that dipstick tube out and you just slip the O-ringed one in and you can orient it however however it needs to be oriented so you can see it moves, which is really nice, but it seals and it works. So you can see the uh, wiring here a little bit better. All factory looking, all the clips are put in and everything is the way it should be. So something else that Brent did that I had him get, we'll go ahead and walk around back here to show you. So you're using copper nickel line. Well, he doesn't want the steel lines. So we sourced these nice stainless steel tube nuts so that we don't have to worry about rust. Obviously we'll put a little bit of anti-seize on those threads so that they don't cause us any issues down the road. But those, are, those stainless steel nuts will make that stay looking nice for a very long time. And then the, obviously here's the other rear PMF line that is, these are smoked in color. These are believe are made by crown. So those are a good quality product. 
but not a lot, whole lot to show you. Like I said, a lot, of, a lot of this stuff wasn't really videoable anyway. It's a matter of just putting stuff together. So we decided with uh, what was going on here this weekend that we would go ahead and get all this put together and just go over it with you. So you could see uh, the progress of this truck. It's coming along, we're getting there. It's just taking a little bit of time. You know, we're finding stuff that's either missing or we need to get as we move along here. But hopefully we'll have this truck back on the road sooner than later. And stay tuned for more updates on Brent's truck. And we can get this hopefully wrapped up for him here by mid-summer. And I think he'd be happy with that. Would you be happy with that, Brent? I'd be very happy with that. Uh, let's see if we can make sure that happens. So please subscribe to the channel if you like these videos and like following along with this project. And thank you for watching.